My husband is blind and he has a guide dog. This is part two of his guide dog story. Paul, where did we leave off? Well, first of all, if you haven't watched part one, can they stick oh, yeah. it up here? <laughs> you might want to start there. Okay, we are at now third week of January. You drove me down to the little town of Boring, Oregon. Yes, it really is called Boring. <laughs> where the Guide Dogs for the Blind campus exists. There's two of them. And what was that like for you, by the way? You were leaving me, dumping me off for two weeks. At that point, I think we'd only spent maybe half a day apart. Yeah, well, like I said, I was excited. I mean, I thought this was an incredible opportunity for you. I love learning, I love new things, I love new experiences. So I was excited about that for you. I also knew that if this worked out, this would be an incredible mobility tool for you. It would open up so much more potential and possibility for you, and it would be a huge upgrade from yes. your cane. Apart from relying on my white cane, I relied on you a lot. Yeah. Did, did you feel that maybe the dog was going to replace you? No, I thought it would be an addition to me. I mean, <laughs> the dog can't drive you to the store <laughs> if it's Are you sure far about away. <laughs> Yeah. Now, you guys could do local close errands, but I would still be needed for, for other things. That's true. That's true. So I said goodbye to you. It was bittersweet, but here I was in this exciting new environment. I stayed in a little dorm room right there on the yeah. campus and immediately got to meet all the staff who were amazing. And they had a, a chef that made all of our meals. I heard about those amazing meals. Amazing meals. I got to meet the other people who were there to train with their guide dogs. So at this time, due to the fact that it was COVID, there were only three people in the whole program, myself included. So it was just three of us. And the other two were what is called retrains. So they were there for their second dog. So uh, I was the newbie the of newbie. all newbies. Getting your first guide dog. Yes. So I was nervous as I often am going into new experiences. I was nervous and excited, but also that due to the COVID restrictions, we were very isolated. We weren't meeting for our meals. We were kept in our rooms a lot. Yeah. And was that hard on you or? Yeah, it actually was. I was missing out on the social aspect of it. I did meet and make friends with the other trainees and I'm still friends with them today, but we got to see very little of each other. Well, <laughs> okay, insert joke. We saw none of each other. <laughs> but that was sort of the, uh, it was like really warm and welcome and wonderful, but also challenging. Uh, so what was your first day like there? Okay, so the first full day is called Dog Day. It's where you get to meet your guide dog, the dog that they have pre-matched for you. The reason they call you down is because they have a dog ready and they look at the, all their files and there's many people involved, I'm sure, in the decision. And they say, well, this person, this dog will match really well with Paul up in Seattle. Let's yeah. give him a call. So I got to meet this dog and it was glorious. We did it outside and it was a female yellow lab <laughs> and she was beautiful and so sweet, just hugged my legs, was just the <laughs> sweetest girl. And I was just instantly like, well, this is gonna be really fun. And she had a beautiful Hawaiian name. I, I texted you immediately with a photo and told you her name and you said, oh, we're taking her to Hawaii. Because <laughs> we had a Hawaii trip planned. That will be her first trip. Yes. And we were really excited. So we got straight to work, training began. This is a rigorous, process. I was unprepared for just how much information I was going to have to absorb and learn, but I love being a student and it was really fun. So you're beginning training, yeah. you dive in head first. Uh, when did you realize that something was wrong? Okay. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Things did not work out. Really. Paul does not have a female Hawaiian named guide dog right now. He is a <laughs> male named Maple. We have Mr. Maple, who's sitting here watching. So <laughs> something went wrong. When did you first notice? You know, I had nothing to compare the experience to, but I would say that I noticed on day one that it felt very uncomfortable. And it was a little unnerving because she was extremely fast. Her pace was about 4.2 miles per hour. And my brisk pace is, you know, 3.6, maybe 3.7. I'm a fast walker, but this dog was like a race car. And I remember just after the first training route with my trainer, I had two lovely trainers working with me. We did all these routes through the town of Gresham, the nearby town of Gresham. By the end of it, my arm was in such pain because of the pull this dog had on me. Not only that, but she was highly distractible. 
if we passed another dog, she would veer toward the dog. Oh, wow. And I would sort of have to pull back on her wow. more. And I felt like I was having to kind of wrangle her energy. And I have anxiety. <laughs> I mean, I've mentioned this before. I'm kind of an anxious person. I wish that weren't the case, but I, 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 I'm living with it. And she made me more anxious. That's not a good combination. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, I had, like I said, I had nothing to compare it to. So I thought, well, I'm just, I'm not going to complain. I guess I just have to get used to it. And my trainers were telling me, you know, it's going to get better. It's going to get easier. Trust me. Week one, everybody feels out of their element. By week two, you're going to feel so confident. Do you remember some of those first phone calls I had with you regarding the whole experience? Yeah, I we just remember you being unsure, talking about the things that were challenging, weren't working for you. I remember some of the experiences when you went to like a pet store and it was so many distractions. Um, I do remember your arm. You talked about your arm just mm -hmm. being sore. I mean, these were long days. You were training. I barely got to talk to you. They had you going from like the moment you woke yes. up to when you like collapsed in bed. The days were jam packed and I slept like a baby because we were just, I was so tired by the end of the day. I cannot stress enough how amazing the staff was and supportive at every step. And eventually I did confide the staff members a few days in to these exercises. And I just said, it's not getting better. And also my dog is refusing to relieve. She would pee, but not go number two. And then finally one day, because she couldn't hold it anymore. Uh, yeah, girl been like, yeah, yeah. this is a marathon. <laughs> right, <laughs> yes. She did it right on the sidewalk while in harness. And it was actually my trainer who alerted me and said, whoa, 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 whoa. And I, cause I didn't know what's going on. Due to protocol, I, I had to pick up the poop, which yeah. was uh, spread out over about 15 feet. I was given the bag. I had to do this all on my own. If this were real life situation, yeah, I'm not going to have help. No. So there I was literally down on the ground and my dog is poor thing. It probably felt just awful yeah. huddling by my trainer's legs. I'm down on the ground finding the pieces of poop. Yeah. <laughs> okay? And I'm just having this full on anxiety. Like, how is this happening to me? Okay. We're going to get past this. We're going to get past this. It's going to be okay. Then that was when the infamous pet store. Oh, okay. It was just directly after that, we went to the pet store. So is this when you decided to quit? Yeah, so I called you that evening and I was in tears. This, by the way, was the start of the second week. The week that I'm supposed to feel the most confident, I felt the least confident. I called you and said, I cannot at this point imagine coming home and even leaving the house with this dog because I will be so filled with anxiety that she's gonna poop you know, in her harness. I'm gonna be scrambling all over the streets looking for it. The distractions, the pulling to this way and that. Listen, this dog is a was a very intelligent dog and was a suitable guide dog, but really required somebody who could handle that energy and wanted that energy. Yeah. And I realized that was not me. She just was not the right guide dog for you. Not the fit for me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was in tears. I was so emotional because I loved this dog. I know it sounds like from everything I just described, I didn't even have an attachment or an affection. I was absolutely in love with her. As a guide team. Yeah, you had lots was, of great experiences as well. Oh, I had well. so many great experiences yeah. that we don't even have time to talk about. And then just all of our downtime together, we bonded so deeply and I loved her. So when I finally sat down with my trainer and they decided to break up the team, I was a mess. I was a total mess. I was heartbroken. I was on the bathroom floor, guttural tears, thinking I'd made the biggest mistake of my life. Why did I do this? It was so emotional and I didn't have you to like hug me in the moment like that. No, but you sent me a video of you crying. I did, I sent a video. Actually, I was just, I was gonna start, I was gonna record something uh, to put on social media. I just cried. I couldn't get the words out, and, but I shared that with you. Pretty devastated. And yeah. you were at the gym when I called you and you dropped everything <laughs> and came down yeah. yeah, I was in the middle of a um, bench press and I got the call. I was like, why is Paul calling? He like, does not call in the middle of the day while he's in training. I know there's classes now. Like mm -hmm. he just only calls me during his little breaks. Yeah. So I answered immediately. You told me like you were done. This did not work and you were done with the program. And I was like, so when should I come get you? And you said, as soon as you can, like you don't have to come down today, but could you come down tomorrow? And I said, I will get home, get in the car and head down right now. That's I, true. I said I did tomorrow. not want you to yeah. stay down there. It just, you were so sad. I just knew you needed to get uh, away from there. I told Matthew, yeah, just come in the morning. 
And he said, no, I'm coming right now. Something kind of sad happened was that they weren't doing graduations at this time. So early in the week when Matthew, I told Matthew the name of the dog, which is that beautiful Hawaiian name, you ordered a, a box full of Hawaiian lays and blow up palm trees and like all these fun decorations. Cause I was going to throw my own graduation at the yeah. end of the week, a, a party just for me <laughs> and the dog. And that package arrived just hours before Matthew came to pick me up. <laughs> I remember the knock at my door and this package arrived full of all these things. And I just broke down again. That was just devastating. Now, before you left, yeah. You did get to try out a couple of other dogs because they were still hoping that they could find you a match, yes. a better match. Yes. Um, but we're going to talk about that on the extended episode. What were the other dogs that you got to try? They were each very unique. <laughs> yes. Spoiler alert. Those dogs may not have worked out either. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, yes, I did get to try out three other dogs, sort of backup dogs. So we will continue next time with your return. The return <laughs> of the Jedi. Paul's yes. return to Guide Dogs for the Blind because yes, he mm. did go back and um, yes, try again. I did. I, I, that was the parting message. I, I loved everybody in the program so much. And they said to me, please, when you are ready, and we know it'll take some time, but when your heart is mended, give us a call, put your application in, come right back. And... We will talk about how that happened uh, on the next update of My Guide Dog Journey. If you want to hear all about the other three dogs that Paul tried out, you can go to patreon.com forward slash his and his. If you're on YouTube, you can tap right here to go there or the video, the extended video is right here. Oh, and I do want our audience to know the dog that didn't work out for me, she did end up finding the perfect match. That's good. She's working. She found someone who can go as fast as her. I they know. Zipping along. I want to. Of who knows where. <laughs> He's just going, watch out. <laughs>